Ripple XRP, so we currently have an opinion from Kathy Wood and she basically says that Gary Gensler is going to be out of his position as the SEC chair. So we're going to take a look at this and whether or not we could potentially see him stepping down. We also have David Schwartz talking about the automated market makers as well and how it will be a big game changer for us. And we are seeing a new hire coming into Ripple as they are going to be working on the ETFs. And also we have seen a surge in XRP payments. This is a very important one that I want to show you guys. We've got some stats and a few figures and it is towards the global merchants as well. Of course, we will be looking at the price action for XRP coin today. All I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. This is what Kathy Wood has said in relation to Gary Gensler. And she says that I don't think that Chairman Gary Gensler will remain at the SEC, whoever is elected. So of course, she is talking about the upcoming elections that we have in the USA. And she's essentially saying that he will no longer be there. Let's take a look at this. I don't think Chairman Gensler will uh, remain at the SEC, whoever is elected. I think he has aspirations for political, uh, some kind of political appointment. So he may go for that reason if uh, if Joe Biden is reelected or he may go he, or he will go altogether if a Republican is uh, nominated. So I mean, the real reason as to why I think Gary Gensler should go and probably the opinion of a lot of people in general is that he just hasn't actually been doing his role as he should be, right? And when it comes to the SEC, we know that he's actually been using his own bias and opinions when it comes to all these lawsuit and cases, and he's not actually been active on behalf of the SEC. Now, we do know that Gary Gensler's term ends in 2026, so we still have roughly two years left now, but could we potentially see him stand down or not? That could potentially be a possibility. I mean, over here, Kathy Wood says that if a Republican is elected, then Gary will most likely be going. And if that's the case, then I think that a lot of people will probably be voting for Republican because we don't want to be seeing Gary in that role anymore. Now we have over here a short video of David Schwartz talking about automated market makers. So we know that AMMs are essentially a type of decentralized exchanges that use money robots. And so it's easier for us to trade because you don't actually need a trader in order to trade and you have the liquidity pools as well. It's gonna be a game changer, that's what he said. Let's take a look at this. AMMs will harvest volatility for yield. Volatility will drive market makers, which the AMM makes a spread by. It takes a movement in price to really drive that volume. And of course, volatility increases arbitrage of profits because the AMM gets more out of balance more, and the AMM gets a cut of those profits through the auction mechanism. So this could really turn the volatility of a digital asset from a downside to an upside. Super excited about it. Automated market makers on the XRP ledger could be a game changer, uniquely positioning it to leapfrog other DEXs. Liquidity providers will get better returns through the inherent execution advantages of the XRP ledger that I just mentioned, and a sort of secret sauce that will allow liquidity providers to get more of the profits normally lost to arbitrage, and it will be bolstered by incentive programs. Traders will get better pricing and better order execution due to integration with existing order books. They won't have to change anything they do. You'll be able to execute the same um, payment and trading transactions on the XRP ledger. You'll get more liquidity and better payment and trade execution. So we know the benefits over here and obviously there is no need for intermediaries. They don't have any sort of third parties. We usually have the brokers when it comes to trading, but users are going to be interacting directly with the blockchain. And so you are essentially able to get rid of that intermediary. And of course, what are the incentives? What makes it attractive for us users to use it? Well, you can actually earn rewards as a liquidity provider through these transaction fees. And these transaction fees are also low as well. And so that is gonna be the reason as to how you will also be able to make some sort of passive income. We have over here an update from Chad Steingraber. Now it's talking about the fact that Ripple are now hiring a senior manager to manage XRP ETF initiatives. So this could potentially be some bullish news. And Chad stays over here that the door has opened and traditional finance just witnessed the most successful ETF launch in history. But JP Morgan actually thinks otherwise. And we're gonna get into that later on in the video. And just like when a new movie goes blockbuster status, what happens? They want more, they smell the money. Ready or not, XRP ETF is coming. Now, I actually just wanna say with caution that Brad Garlinghouse has not spoken about an XRP ETF. BlackRock hasn't either. They've actually avoided the question. So I don't think that an XRP ETF will be coming for this year at all. I think that we still need to see 
more developments from the lawsuit case and actually get that over and done with. But even then, Brad Garinghouse has actually avoided the question in terms of the ETF and also with an IPO as well. Now, whilst they've actually posted this and they're going to be hiring this senior manager, it's probably going to be for them to actually get into the, in the beginning stages first and then we could possibly see an XRP ETF maybe in the next one to two years but I don't think that'll be happening in 2024. But this just goes to show you what they are currently doing right now. So we have this report from the Crypto Basic, and it says over here that a 42% surge was seen in XRP payments to global merchants. So we're gonna take a look at this because this is another use of adoption, and that is what we want to see with Ripple XRP. XRP was used to facilitate 7,310 payments to businesses across 113 industries, and it was a 42% increase compared to the transaction volume of the previous year. So this 7.3K is obviously not a big number. It's not like as if it's in the hundreds of thousands or in the millions, but at least we've had some sort of utility and adoption over there. And I would like to see these XRP payments to increase by another at least 30 to 40% going on for this year as well. We'll also have over here that XRP was among the top 10 most used tokens and the USA actually made more payments than any other country when it came to XRP payments and so I'm sure by now that USA actually has more of a stronghold and so we may be seeing more growth when it comes to that and the different sectors that we saw in terms of the crypto payments was actually a variety and it ranged from things like precious metals to luxury goods and jewelries and also gaming as well so this is good to see that we've got adoption in XRP payments we are still very much low in terms of the stats though but at least we are doing something as of now now. So we have over here from Wrath of Caneman. So in relation to Ripple Net, it says over here that 50% of Ripple's payments use XRP via the ODL and that Ripple Net is the first service provider for organizations that actually serve the purpose of usage while building credibility. And Ripple Net is the cross-border payment method that uses the XRP coin as a bridge. And RippleNet are in many different countries right now. I think that they are in Morocco and they're working in other different countries. Maybe Brazil might also be wrong, but they're trying to target different countries in Africa and RippleNet will be able to provide a solution for those customers. From Bitcoin news, we have over here that JP Morgan has called the Bitcoin ETF launch disappointing. Well, I wonder why they've said that. And on the other hand, Bloomberg Intelligence Analysis say Bitcoin ETFs had the most successful ETF launch in history by both trading and flow metrics. And it says over here that the net flows are 857 million over the first nine trading days. I personally think that the Bitcoin spot ETF launch was pretty good. I think we saw a lot of inflows coming in. There was a lot of hype. A lot of people spoke about it. I think maybe JP Morgan were probably talking about the fact that the price of Bitcoin didn't surge as they wanted to, perhaps. I mean, let's take a look at the price action of Bitcoin right now. It's trading at 41.7K. I mean, before the spot Bitcoin ETF approval, Bitcoin was roughly at around about $48,000. So we've obviously seen that massive retracement, but still Bitcoin is much higher compared to where we were before back in November, where Bitcoin was trading at 27K. So I'm not sure if JP Morgan is just trying to do their usual thing again, which is lines so that they can buy up more of the coin. And I always laugh at this meme as well, whenever I see it on X. It's absolutely hilarious. Of the CEO, Jamie Dimon, saying Bitcoin is a fraud and what price did we get in at? It's still relevant today and I think that it will be relevant in the future as well. Before we have a look at the price action for XRP coin, we have another country that is eyeing a CBDC launch by 2030. And in terms of CBDCs, we usually see countries, for example, in Asia that are trying to launch a CBDC or in Europe, but we've not actually seen many of these countries in Africa. So we have Egypt. And the reason as to why is to increase financial inclusion inclusion of course among its unbanked population and so they will be focusing on the retail side of things to supplement cash use because I still think that cash in the countries like Egypt are used on a regular basis and more so when compared with the West and we have over here that the growing number of citizens are turning to foreign based stable coins and other digital currencies to hedge their wealth from inflation. Some critics have said that the proposed launch of a CBDC in 2030 may be too late I mean that is six years away from now. I know that some other countries are trying to launch a CBDC in the next two to three years so I'm not sure if it will be as late. The Egyptian financial authorities are currently interfacing with the Bank for International Settlements 
and the International Monetary Fund as well. And that is for technical and policy direction for an E pound, which is the Egyptian pound. So it's good to see that we've got Egypt currently on that lookout for the CBDC. So XRP priced for today. We are currently trading at 0.5298. We are up by 1.85% on the one day chart. For the 24 hour volume, we are down by 13.31% and we are trading at $759.3 million. So if we have a look at the earlier hours of the morning for where we were trading, you'll see over here, we were pretty much trading at that 53 cent level at 0.5323. We're looking nice and green today, the same as yesterday. On the seven day chart, we are down by 3.47% doing pretty good i mean we're seeing this nice recovery if we have a look at this dip we were at 0.4975 so we've come up slightly now by roughly around about three cents and this little recovery we've had from this dip to 0.505 so at that 50 cent level we are now just under that 53 cent mark that is where i want xrp coin to hit and that's the price target i've been looking for on the one month chart we are down by 15.76 percent we're doing slightly better because a few days ago we were down by 20 percent so it's just a little recovery that we are now seeing i want to see xrp coin get to that 53 to 55 cent range i mean just a couple of days ago you know on the 21st we were able to hit 0.5536 it really shouldn't be that hard right now we're just seeing a lot of stagnation in the price and not much movement but let's see if we can get there in the next couple of days guys if you want daily ripple xrp coin news subscribe to the channel and like the video as well